Welcome to the Black Men Think Podcast. If this is your first time here, know that the views and opinions expressed by the Black Men Think Podcast, are those of the Black Men Think Podcast and not the individual members. With that being said, we're about to be unapologetically, undeniably black. Enjoy. All right, welcome to Black Men Think Podcast. Uh, today, we are here. Um, got C. Wisby back in the building. I am JD, aka last name Good. Shout out to Tory. Your streak is over with. He all in the um, he in the text message trying to negotiate so he can uh, keep his streak going. Your streak over with, my boy. You missed the day. Your streak over with. I think you ended at about what four, something like that. But um. Now, Corey, Corey here tonight, man, and, and we we got a couple of things we can go in a couple of directions, but before we get into the conversation for tonight, uh, if you are interested in what we're doing, make sure you follow us on Patreon to get more bonus content. Uh, we have some cool things that we do over there, um, bonus episodes, some more unique ideas and things that we're going to be pushing here, uh, especially coming up in the next year. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, make sure you go there. Subscribe. You can pick whichever tier floats your fancy, you know, and um, join us on that side. So, with that being said, bro, like we was in, we was in the uh, group chat, and Marlon, who's not here today, but had like some great topics, and I felt like we can touch on a couple of those and kind of go go from there. Sound like a plan. Sound like a plan. I don't hear you. I don't. Yeah, I don't hear you. Hold up. Mic check. Oh, I can't hear myself now. <clears throat> so we need to start over. No, we ain't got to start over. Keep uh -huh. it going. So I'll, I'll do that again. So, um, yeah, we just had the wrong mic up. It's all good. We'll keep it going. So a um, couple of things that we were going to get into. And shout out to Mo for... for kicking us off with some topics, but you know, the big thing that's been in the news for this, this past week has been, you know, Jada Pickett and, and Will, and we don't have to go into that, but we can kind of branch off of that and have our own conversation, you know? And so I think a couple of directions that I want to go. Number one, when, when is it okay to, make your relationship the details of your relationship public hmm. never <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it just in my that, opinion in your um, opinion never. i mean okay and, it, and I, I do want to add this caveat i know we can't speak from a place of like being a celebrity yeah fame and fame because yeah. that comes with it with the territory however I'm just thinking, like, if we were in their shoes, like, mm -hmm. when is it okay to, to, to I guess, giving too much information to the public? Well, so when you say private, what do you say, private inf or detailed information? Like, yeah, yeah, like personal, personal relationship information, I would say. Because, like, I, to be clear, I don't want us to deep dive into their situation. Yeah. I really don't care about that. That's their business. But I'm just using that as a framework for our conversation. Yeah, so like, give me an example of what what kind of detailed information you're, you're like. Heard. Should I know what your sex life is like with your spouse? Yeah. Okay. Should I know? Should I know when y'all are dealing with issues? No. Okay. Should I know? Should I know? y'all's past transgressions it depends okay so if you're using your past issues transgression whatever you want to call it as a learning tool for somebody else mm. and you both agree that hey you know this we can use this you know we're okay right as a couple to share stuff that we've gone through i mean i don't see a problem with that mm -hmm. but the stuff that people put out these days, and not just famous people, but just people in general. People man, in general you can just yeah. be on social media and just see stuff that people put out. I think it's just it's unnecessary. It's uncalled for. Gotcha. Um, because you're feeding an audience that really 
they don't care. Um, and they're just, you know, they see the stuff that you post. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they're going to read it or they're going to see if you go live or you make videos or whatever. I mean, it's to me, it's, it's irrelevant. Like, I don't know why you even need the feedback of, yeah. um, you know, the, the general public. I mean, if you have go-to people that you have that you lean on for advice or whatever, that's fine to share with them mm -hmm. um, within an intimate setting. But to just have your stuff on blast like that, I, I think that's that's yeah. pointless. No, I feel that. I feel that. Um, it's kind of one of those things like I don't necessarily struggle with, but, you know, sometimes I try to think about how things would be if it was on the other side because for us, we have the luxury to be able to walk around and live in that amenity. Did I say that word right. You know what I'm sure. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We can we can walk around and be who we want to be and not really have to worry about anybody caring, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Versus celebrities um, or famous people or entertainers, athletes, they walk around with a shadow, mm -hmm. and that shadow is you know people watching all day long. You know they don't get the luxury of laying low, so to speak, and so you know. Some people may think it's a part of their responsibility to share, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I try to, especially when things like that come up, I try to look at it from their perspective. As you said, something super important, like it can be a learning tool from somebody, yeah, you know? But I, I think what's important, as long as like the two are communicating, like you said, um, that you want your message to be unified and like given to people yeah, and, and then kind of go from there. But I don't know, man, sometimes it get kind of weird because it can come off as like when you're here, especially when you're constantly only hearing one side, mm -hmm. it, it comes off a certain type of way. And so I, I think people have to be super important with that. However, just as regular people, brother, oversharing is like crazy. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, it's, it's a lot. It's sad to be honest. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I mean, I don't, why do you have to put your business out there like that? Like it's, you know, everybody got some kind of issue or something mm -hmm. they're dealing with. And it just is not for everybody to know. Um, especially when you got to hit social media. I mean, a lot of those people you probably don't even talk to, um, on a regular basis. So True. is there a need for them to even know what's going on? No, um, I feel that. It's just, you know, the the overflow of information is, is crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I mean, we've we've talked about it like I mean several episodes, but um just to kind of like shift gears, <laughs> Marlon put something in the chat that was like hilarious, but also very thought provoking because we get these things of like prenup that come up all the time and most of the time when we hear prenup, it is really one sided, mm -hmm. right? And and it's one sided as saying like, Oh, you know, do she have to sign a prenup if y'all get married? Mm -hmm. It's twenty twenty three now. We living in a different world, um, where I mean, women are making can be making two, three times more than their yeah. counterparts or whatever. So what you sign a prenup if she said the only way we can make this work mm -hmm. if you sign a prenup yeah i mean if if i'm willing to have someone to sign one mm -hmm. then i would be open to signing one depending on the language i mean I but what's the like that okay we, i mean my thing is just uh i mean i don't have much um you know information or how the whole thing worked but mm -hmm. something along the lines of like you know uh, we walk away with what we came in with, like anything that we accumulated together from this. Once we get married, then you know, however that's gonna be, you know, outlined in the yeah, in the yeah. agreement. But you know, if if you're saying that, hey, whatever we came in with prior to us getting married, that's what we start off with. with as far as we're if we split, mm -hmm. then you know something like that. Long as it, long as it's fair, I mean, you know, it's fair, yeah. So do you think, because we always hear about prenups, and especially in entertainers and uh, those people. I mean, of course, there's big business people that have prenups as well. 
they're just not made public. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we don't really hear about it as much. <clears throat> but rarely do you hear everyday people getting a prenup. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know anybody in my family that had a prenup that I can think of. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, you know, maybe they do and they just didn't yeah. divulge that information. But I don't, I, I've never heard anybody in my family speak of prenups. Mm -hmm. Now, the flip side of that, there's not a lot of people in my family that's married. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So that might be one part. <laughs> they think about it like that. Yeah. But, you know, that's just not something that we we heard or I heard. I want to make this super, like, put it on me. That's not a word that I heard a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it made me think about, is that something, is it worth it from just regular people, and I'm not trying to diminish when I say regular, but I just want to separate the two because we know entertainers and all of that, and they're dealing with millions and millions of dollars, so it's a little bit different. But from someone that's on a, you know, everyday working person, you know, making thirty to to $100,000 a year, like, are you, does it make sense for that person to have a prenup? What's your thoughts on that? I mean, it depending on, you know, uh... I guess it, it all boils down to your assets. I guess that's that's the whole you know mm -hmm. purpose of it. Like I said, I'm not you know it's not like I've ever done research on the whole um, the whole agreement and the process. Um, but I would imagine that if things did go, you know, you two people decide to split, I would imagine that prenup would save the headache of you know. I mean, a divorce still is going to be stressful. Yeah. I would imagine, yeah, but yeah, I can imagine it probably that. eliminate a lot of things because you already already got it figured out from the beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, so I mean, I've I've heard people say, "Oh, you know, you don't want to have that going into a marriage because you know you already already thinking negative." I mean, I wouldn't say that because I mean, at the end of the day, it is a business. Um, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, it is a business. I mean, two people hopefully love each other, but I mean. If things did go, you know, sour, then at least you got that in place. Especially if there is a certain amount of assets involved. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, this probably would apply more to, like, the normal people. Um, the older they get, because they're gonna right, accumulate right, right, more. Right. I mean, when you're young, if you're coming out of college and you're early twenty, for most of them, it's not like they have a whole lot of assets. But yeah. you know, when you get up in age, you start accumulating more. Right. You start to think like, hey, if this goes sour, I can get white clear in them. Like, I'm already 40, 50 years old, and it's <laughs> like, <laughs> this can be a bad look. So, I mean, it, it it's going to take both people in the marriage to, or, you know, the engagement yeah. to, um, well, hopefully you talked about that before you got engaged. Yeah, I mean, um, you should definitely, that that's a conversation that's supposed to happen Yeah. early on. Yeah. You know what I'm that's not a... I don't, I mean, well, I don't feel, because I don't have a prenup, right? Like, me and my wife got married. I was like, hey, you in here with me. So, yeah. like, <laughs> um, I, I, we had, like, we both had our own things prior to get married, but it was just, like, a general consensus. Like, bro, we are building something. So yeah. Whatever we build is what we build. Yeah. Somebody um, else did bring up, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, Sorry ahead, about that. Somebody else did bring up a good point, because I had this conversation with somebody. When, you know, when kids are involved, that kind of changes things as far changes. as how... The agree. It's different when it's just two adults, right? Um, right. But when you have kids involved, so you got to think about that too. If we have kids, how would things, you know? You yeah. Know, well, what's, what? traditionally, bro, like you have to be a horrible mom to not get kids in a divorce. Mm -hmm. It's just like that's just the law of the land. Yeah. Like for for the state to take away to separate a mother from their child. The mom is just just not stable at all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm mean, talking about, and not even to down like talk down on anybody, but it's just you have to be in a position of you barely can take care of yourself, and yeah. like the the husband ha is just doing great financially and where it just makes sense. But most of the time, bro, like you're not separating kids away from from their mom. Yeah, yeah. just not not in divorce. It just don't happen like that. But um. Say so all that to say, I mean, I think ultimately everybody got to do what's best for them. You know, I, I definitely don't want to shy away from that. But it is kind of funny that 
those conversations are never had or had very, you know, less likely to, to happen in medium, you know, income families, mm -hmm. right? I, I think, you know, if you're somebody that's making a million dollars a year, you probably had a conversation about a prenup. Yeah. I just, I feel like that's Or just, your financial advisor. Your financial advisor too. had a conversation with you about yeah. having a conversation, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's that's another story, conversation for another day. But um, I want to kind of like get into something a little more lighthearted. We both got a chance to experience homecoming mm -hmm. this past, um, past weekend, which was dope. Love the... Just the vibe of it. Even though, like, I had my girls with me, and so I was stationary. Didn't really get a chance to move around. What school was this, man? You know, you oh, just... the Georgia State University. The talking about the real GSU. Yeah, the real GSU. You talking about nineteen thirteen? There you go. GSU. Yeah, state, not southern. Yeah, gotcha. those guys. Like, it's yeah. do I have? Yeah, I got not too far away. Some G State stuff in the building here, but went to homecoming. And, you know, we try to go to homecoming most of the time every year. I mean, it don't happen every year, but we try to go, um, at least to the tailgate. Sometimes we make it to the game, sometimes we don't. Did you go to the game? Nah. Okay. I watched a little bit of it on TV. Though. Yeah, no, they, yeah. they, they won. They yeah. won. They beat Marshall. It was a good game. Um, but, it, I mean, I, I always have mixed emotions when I go to homecoming. Mm-hmm. Especially now, because those that went to Georgia State in that 2000 to 2006 range, you remember we didn't have a football team. Right. It was a club. It was a club. Like, it was, and when we mean club, not in a mural, it was a bunch of guys who got together and said, yo, we just want to play football. Right. <laughs> and they got together. I don't even think they had, like, real uniforms. Was, I remember, like, white helmets and... yeah. Just like, you know, blue, blank, I don't even think it had Georgia State I, on it. I can't even remember, but, but I remember it being a club, though. Yeah, definitely. it was definitely a club. And, and I don't even know where they played. Me either. Probably Patrickville or something. Yeah. I don't know where yeah, they played. Yeah, you probably did, yeah. But to see now, man, like, I mean, we have a legit football program that has won bowl games and have NFL players right. be drafted from our college. And so... We're talking about this within 20 years, less than 20 years. Yeah. And to be able to see that, it's just, it's amazing, man. But like, you know, we remember those times of when that wasn't a real thing. Like homecoming for us used to be. During basketball season. Basketball season. Yeah. <laughs> in the parking lot and the gravel, where they, like where the science building was, up, yeah. where they built that at. And so to see where it is now, man, and, and the amount of people, because you can imagine homecoming during a basketball season was basically none existent. Like, nobody really went to homecoming back then. It wasn't like, even though we had a good basketball team, homecoming just wasn't really something that we looked forward to, I think. Yeah, you it had was, to go to other schools. Yeah, we went to other schools for their homecoming. Their homecoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what we did. But just to see where we're at now, man, and, you know, to be out there with the different people and, and just experience it. My question for you at what point did you feel like you were old? Um, because I feel like we all had that feeling at home. I would say probably once I actually got there and got settled in and just started looking around and then realized, <laughs> like, you know, I'm looking around, like I see a lot of us, but mm -hmm. I don't have that plaza feel. Mm. Like I don't see a lot of familiar faces that you know I would think I would see right, right. Um, for homecoming. Um, I mean, I saw a few people, but I think if, especially, you know, the older um, graduates mm -hmm. um, or people who just hung out there. Um, <laughs> that, that's a real thing. Um, you know, um, if once work get out, especially if it's, if it becomes, a permanent, you know, thing as far as their location. Mm -hmm. um, I think it probably get better at time go along um, because I mean, like I say, it's a nice atmosphere. Yeah, um, no, you're right across from great. the stadium and all yeah. the other stuff. Um, but I think once the marketing hit the older crowd, I don't think it should be a. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem because the one thing, and I'm and I'm only comparing it to what I see whenever I would go to homecoming. Like my wife went to Albany State, mm -hmm. and so 
you know, when you go to HBCU's homecoming, it's a difference. Like it's it's really a whole event. And don't get me wrong, like shout out to the ACC. They really took the time out to do events all during the week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so yep. big time deal. So shout out to them because they really went the extra mile to make this an experience for people that graduated during the time that we graduated. And really just for everybody. Um but one thing that I would notice, like when I went to my wife's homecoming, you know, like there's tents set up. There's just like people are outside all day cooking and just vibing. And it was just like different pockets of people. But the biggest thing that I noticed, you would see people from like 70 years old. Yeah. All the way down to like. 22, 23. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's the one thing that I didn't see. I yeah. didn't see a lot of older people at yeah. our homecoming. Like, And the older people that I did see, they were probably, you know, Greek. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it wasn't, you didn't see a lot of people, honestly, probably over, I would say over 50. I didn't see a lot of people. Over yeah. Um, yeah, you didn't, you didn't see that. But yeah. I, I think, you know, um, it. I think things are going in a, in a um, good direction, though, mm-hmm. for sure. Cause I'm sure a lot of the younger people. I mean, it, they're all it's all good for them because you know they see oh, a lot yeah. of their peers, yeah, yeah, yeah. people that recently graduated. It just once it were get to the older graduates, I think it'll be you know it'll give you more of that. Yeah, and it, it takes time. Um, like I said, I think they're they're getting off to a great start. Yeah, definitely for sure. Cause I mean it, it's grown a lot. Um, you know as far as the activities surrounding homecoming. Yeah. No, I mean, even when you think about the fact that we have, especially the stadium that we're in, because that, that stadium has so much history for me being a Braves fan. I spent plenty of time at Turner Field. Mm-hmm. But like to see it transformed into a football field, let alone my Auburn Models football field. Like, it's just, it's amazing to see. And like, we have a good team, bro. Like, we're yeah. five and one. You know what I mean? It's not like we out here. Yeah, like scrubbing it, scrubbing around. Like we, we actually have a, a solid team, and we having the, the support now. I, I would love the day, and ho- hopefully we'll get a chance to see it where it's like going to a UGA game and it's wall to wall. Yeah, it's it's really an event every Saturday. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's, I'm I'm waiting on that moment. Right now we're we're probably putting a couple of thousand people in that stadium. But yeah. Um, I am looking forward to that day when it's Yeah, I think they definitely need to get some more of the um the Georgia teams playing each other. We played Georgia I don't know if we I mean, we usually play Georgia Southern. I don't know if they Yeah, s- Georgia Southern still in the same conference. Yeah, okay, same yeah. Conference, yeah. But you know, the Georgia Tech, you know, play a Morehouse, let it be an off game or something. Play yeah. a Clark, you know. Yeah, I mean I think that, that's, that's a good gonna idea. draw that's gonna draw like, you know, people already in the city yeah. to to come. Um but I'm sure as time goes along, I'm sure Georgia Tech is somewhere on there. Um, yeah, I can in see the that. Because they're playing LSU this year. Um, who? Uh, Georgia oh, State. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, they're playing that. LSU. So, yeah. Um, you know, it, like I said, it's just it's a sight to see, bro, because I can truly remember the days of club football. Like, this was a real thing. I want people to really understand what club football was for us. Like, yeah. it was – we didn't even – there was no going to the game. You didn't – to be to be completely transparent, it was laughable that we had a club football team. Yeah. You know, coming from, you know, we coming from high school, where everybody had a football team for the most part. If you if you went to a high school in Georgia, y'all had a football team. Yeah, that's just it. Just is what it is, uh, and, and so we're talking about the team, the club team was probably would have been resembling maybe like a JV football team. Like just, it wasn't, it wasn't there, but those guys had the foresight to, without them, we don't get to where we are now, man. So you got to salute to them. So that, that was still amazing to see. Yeah. Definitely amazing to see. Yeah. But overall it was, you know, it's pretty cool event. Um, yeah. You know, it seemed like everybody enjoyed themselves. And- yeah. I'm, I'm probably out of the age range of like doing the week, events i'm yeah. just there. i'm tailgate only yeah i'm probably tailgate in the game right like i would have went to the game 
if it wasn't late because that was the first time we had a late game, I felt. Yeah, I can't remember it being that late. Yeah, we usually have like a 12 or a 1 o'clock game. You yeah. know what I mean? So the tailgate's early, then you go, go into the game. But we played a primetime football game at 7, 7 p.m. Yeah. So And I wonder if it was probably ESPN. It was on ESPN, too. Yeah. yeah it was on ESPN, So too. I'm sure that probably had something to do um, with it. Almost certain. Yeah, yeah. Almost certain. But shout out to Georgia State University. Remember, state not southern. Um, every voice that you've heard on this podcast went to Georgia State. So it is what it is. We're going to rep our school just like anybody else will rep their school. So uh, before we wrap for, for this evening... Want to make sure we, and I think that it should be something that we do all the time, even though I know we do it, you know, via text message, but I found that this is helpful for the people that's listening just to have like a homeboy check in. So mm -hmm. like maybe we can make this a segment, like an ongoing segment where we do a homeboy, homie check in, tell us like how your week was going, anything like any, not necessarily like issues, but things that might be pressing on your, on your brain that you want to talk about. Or things that you don't want to talk about that you just maybe need prayer for or anything like that. I just feel like we should have a space and um, eventually get to a place to where people can, like if you are with our Patreon community, start sending us your homeboy check in and then we can, you know, play it on the air and, um, you know, provide some commentary to to what you're saying. So that's something right here. So start start here, like homeboy check in. What what you got going on? Man, staying out the way. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, for real, just you know, no, nah, for real, <laughs> trying to live a peaceful life, yeah, and enjoy the small things, and you know, um, just try not to take things for granted. Uh, that's that's, that's about it, to be honest. I mean, um, you know, life is life, yeah. life is life, and then you know, you just keep pushing. Um, I always stay prayerful, you know, I always can use prayer, so oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely, definitely need that, but. Besides that, you know, just trying to stay healthy, maintain. Um, you know, cuffing season approaching. <laughs> cuffing season? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you're not. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. He said cuffing season is approaching, so he just put his beard out there. Matching like, PJs. Matching PJs? That's um, how you get down? I don't know about them pumpkin patch picks. Hey, that's too, that's that? too soon, about two weeks. You know, you oh, tell me about it. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, got you. trying to yeah, be probably, trying yeah. to post some pictures on, so I'm trying to post some pictures. Yeah, you on should. Social that'll media. be a sight to some see. Matching pajamas. This you year. know what? I can't nah. wait. <laughs> I can't wait to the day when I open up Facebook and yeah. I see you got a, a couple's pick. Uh, you probably won't see bro, that, bro. I get it's gonna happen, bro. Nah, Somebody nah. gonna have you vulnerable. Anybody like know me that I don't? Yeah, I don't post. Uh, if I'm being posted, it's somebody else posting it. Well, that's what I'm saying. You ain't got to post it somebody else. Oh no, nah, but who? But who would I give permission to post it, my pajama? Pic? It ain't go. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many times I've been on Facebook and I got I look and see a picture that I ain't approved that's on Facebook? You doing something wrong, my boy? No, I'm not. <laughs> the fact that she posted me don't do it right. <laughs> I'm <laughs> doing so right. Don't post me. No, nah, it's just like, I don't know. It's just social media. I, I, I just, the people that need to know, they know. Do they? Yeah. If you I don't know, then the it, <laughs> I ain't going to put you on the spot. Then it, it's nothing to know then. It's just, that, that's just how I am. I mean, social I media, see. social media can go away right now and I won't, you know. I'm, but honestly though, you know, a lot of that has to do with our age group too. So that's true. I do want to be mindful of that because that's we come from true. an era where we remember what it was before and we remember what it was out there and we've been able to live through both. Yeah. And so I, I think very much the same like you, like I utilize social media a lot every day. It's, it's actually a part mm -hmm. of my day job. I do it every single day, but I'll be lying to you if I would say like, there's times where I check out, Yeah. you know, like I, I got messages right now where people have been hitting me up about this festival that I haven't returned just because it's like, it can get overwhelming. You know what I mean? So you just kind of have to take a step back. But just like you said, if it went away today, yes, you might have some withdrawal. You know, you're used to doing this and looking and trying to figure out what's going on. But ultimately, I know I would be okay. Like, I, I got other yeah. things that I could do. But the flip side of that is you have people that that's their everyday life. That's all they know. And not really sure how they would be able to move on. <laughs> that sounds kind of sad, but. I mean, it sounds kind of sad to us because that wasn't our life. But do you, like. Do you need that to like actually survive and live? And I, I mean, 
once again, <clears throat> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, no. I mean, I think this is a great topic. I yeah. think this is a great topic. But, you know, I, I have to put in perspective. I'll put it like this. How long did it take your mom to stop going to the place to pay the bill? <laughs> to stop? To stop. She probably ain't stopped. No. Nah. She still she still go to the place and pay the bill. Yeah, but that's 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 no. for survival though. No, 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 no. Let's hear me out. All right, go ahead. Hear Finish. me out. I'm using that as a connection to this conversation. Mm -hmm. She can create an online account and pay that bill online, right? Sure. She can do it. Why don't she do it? I'm I'm saying this because my mom won't do it either. But why yeah. won't she do it? Because they're they don't you know they're not technical. They don't. And work with computers. They're not and all technical. That. They don't work with computers. Stuff they don't trust that you know. There you go. Now, now we in. got back to it. We got to what the real deal is. Most of them don't trust. Yeah. Technology. Yeah. Right. Are they wrong? Yeah. They wrong. Not really. They're not wrong because they still have an option to do it another way. That's what I'm saying. They have an option to do it another way, but this way is much easier. And all they got to do is just do it. But they're not going to do it because they're used to doing things a certain way. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's the way they was raised. That's how they grew up. That's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. Us, it's the same way. We're just a different... We're like, it's a 20-year gap. We do things the way that we do it. We're a unique group because we really fall on that with, with, in terms of technology. We fall in that mid-gap of we remember dial-up. Mm -hmm. We remember we know what dial-up is and we know what high-speed internet is. Right. We know what uh eight bit Sega Genesis is and we know what Xbox One or whatever it is now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we we have a clear understanding of all of that. We don't there's no gray area when it becomes comes to technology. We understand what it was and what it is now. What I'm saying is this generation that's here that was born in two thousand and above, meaning that they don't even know Y2K. Mm -hmm. They don't have a thought of that the internet, like the number was going to go to zero and then everything was going to go crazy. They don't have a thought of that. Their whole life, they know what, they've seen Twitter, like their whole life. Like you got to remember, dog, it's 2023, soon to be mm -hmm. 2024. If you was born the year that we graduated high school, 02, mm -hmm. you're 21 at this point. You don't even know, you don't remember seeing 9-11. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's just like, you might know about it because it's part of history, but 9-11 hit different for us because we actually saw it. Like, we saw it on the TV. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it just it's different. So what I say all that to say, this generation, though, like, that's all they've seen their whole life is Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Anything time something new comes, that's what they see. So it's a part of their life. People right now date online with online dating, mm -hmm. with apps. To go out and meet somebody regular is almost like an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Like, how often do you go out and actually meet somebody at a bar and then, like, y'all take another step from there? It don't happen as much as somebody on Tinder, on whatever. I don't know all the apps. But they own apps meeting people now. That's just a part of their day-to-day. -day. So I'm just saying, though, like, it sounds crazy that people can't live without it. But the truth is, it's their life now. That's all they know. Mm-hmm. Sad, but you know. <laughs> say it's sad. <laughs> I think the dependency on it is sad. Like the fact that you're basically kind of addicted to it is like you feel like things aren't, you know, going right if you don't have access to social media or you can't post this, you can't post where you at, or you hear you're there, or what's going on in your personal life. Like mm -hmm. I just think that it's just, you know, sad, man. That why, you can't. Why, why does your voice change? You, you can't say disconnect, sad. man, because I'm trying to be, you know. You say you can't disconnect? Yeah, even when you feel like you can't disconnect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people stop posting your per stop posting your personal business on social media. Keep your relationships out of social media. Like for real. It it just like if you post it, we're gonna read it. Like, you know, <laughs> if when you, you post start it, we like read when, it. if you're in a relationship and you got all these pictures of your significant other here, there, everywhere, and then one day I get on there and I look and I see that everything is gone. Now I'm starting to wonder, like, you know, what okay. happened? Like what what okay. what's going on? Cause I, I saw a meme or something, it was like, 
Like we need closure too. The people that's being nosy, we, <laughs> we want closure. closure. <laughs> we want closure too. You know. <laughs> so you just said you said a key word there, but I just 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 state just so we can have both sides of the argument. Is it possible that you're being too nosy? Not really, because I don't have to. It's some days I don't go on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that I'm being nosy. Is that if I'm looking on my phone and it's on my feed, like I'm gonna read it, or if you post something, I'm gonna look at it. So I don't think that's nosy because I'm not like trying to go out of my way to find information. It's the information is available, so I'm gonna read it, or but that's, if I but, choose to read it, so or I, look at I, it. I guess my thing is, if you know that that's what's there, why go there? What do you mean? If I know what's there, like you know what you're gonna see on your feed. I mean, there are many different things on my feed. But I'm saying it's like, not all relationship stuff that people post. But it's it's it's, it's, it's a no, wide range of things. What I'm saying is, when you go on your feed, you're seeing other people's thoughts. Right. Is that a fair assessment? Some. I mean, not everything, but there. Yeah. For the most, but you're seeing someone else's opinion. You're seeing what someone else wants you to see. Right. Because they okay. post it. So with that information in mind and knowing that information, why do you go? It's, um, it's, I just so happen to look at it. I mean, I skip, I can skip over it. But I, what I'm trying to do is get down to the root because, like, we all go to social media. Like, why do we go to social media? It's, it's information. It's a time filler. That's what it is. It's a time filler. Yeah. It's, it's a time filler. You know, yeah, yeah, I feel I'm going to see what's going on in the world. Yeah. I feel that. It's but a time But to be filler. honest, it's just like, for me, and, and, and I only can speak for myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have to, like, it's whatever. I don't if I don't go on there, it's it's not like oh I feel like I missed out. Yeah. Um, no, I think what you said is perfect. It's a time filler. Like, and I think a lot of times we're doing it, not even realizing what we're doing. Oh yeah, because it's so natural and so yeah. easy to do. Yeah, it's a part one of our One click day, and like, you know, one tap on the app and you're looking at all this stuff. Thirty minutes before, later. yeah, thirty minutes, <laughs> 30 minutes two later. hours. Yeah. It's like dang, um, this whole time I've just been reading what other people have been posting. It's a crazy world, man. When you really think about it, that's what we we do on a like everybody on a daily basis. That's what they're doing. It's even crazy, like though, I've I've got messages, I've got like DMs and Facebook messages from my mom at like one thirty in the morning. Yeah, I'm like, mom, come on now, yeah. what are we doing? Like, yeah. like, are you you up scrolling on Facebook too? <laughs> and it's just crazy because it's like, though, it was a time where we had to have a college email and I right. know we're gonna sound super old whatever y'all are our same age that's listening to this but there was a time when you had to have a college email address to get on Facebook and the fact that my mom has sent me messages at 1 30 a.m on Facebook is crazy to me yep let alone she's my friend on Facebook <laughs> Right. <laughs> I've even got requests from my grandma on Facebook. Yeah. I'm like, what are we talking? <laughs> I told my grandma to her face, I'm never adding you as my friend. <laughs> yeah. Not that I don't want to know what's going I'm on. Told, I'm like, you I'm my told grandma. That. I'm like, uh, yeah. Even though, I mean, to be honest, because I don't really post, it shouldn't really matter. But really, for people that be posting and sharing stuff, that might not be appropriate for. I mean, my thing is, I don't, I don't put anything on anything that I don't care for people to see. Yeah. At that point, like, now don't. Get it twisted. I definitely lived during the time, those early Facebook years. If anybody find those archives, it's crazy. <laughs> I, I can own up to that. It was wild, wild west back then. You 18, 19 years old. Right. Ain't no telling what I posted. Or looking at those old messages. I'm like, what? No. That happens. Like, bro, have you ever just like somebody uh, hit yeah. you up? Uh, I've done. Yep. And I'm like, mm, I'm like, I don't even know. Did I, I want really to say this? this? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I'm talking about it hit me one time. Somebody had had hit me up on, on um, Facebook Messenger. And they were trying to get some information about something. I can't remember what it was. But I was just like, they ain't heard from this person in a minute. But then I was like, oh, let me just scroll. Yeah. And I scrolled up. I was like, hold on, I'm scrolling for a while. Like, we had some engaging conversation. I was just like, dog, I was crazy, dog. Right. Like, this was... The whole conversation was just trying to get to to where I was trying to get to, but you know, just yeah. Still though, I was just like, man, this is wild. And then I was like, I wonder how many messages I got because you right. know it's stuff you don't remember. Like exactly. of course you're in the moment, yeah. just 
going through, but I was just like, this is crazy, bro. Especially when Facebook was just new. Like, you were just adding people. No, just adding And they people. had the poke feature. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people probably don't even remember that. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it was, it was, time was different. Time was different. We always apologize for our past. And, you know, if anybody read those messages and y'all feel offended, you know, we can have a conversation. I'm open for open dialogue. I was a different person back then. It is what it is. Though. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's yeah. growth, man. Yeah, it's growth. Your was, mindset is. Yeah, it's, 18, it's, 19 years old. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure I had my mind on like one or two things at yeah. that time. You know what I'm saying? But yep. it, but that to me, that's probably the, that is that one, is that and like, Facebook will pop up memories mm-hmm. that oh, be yeah. crazy. I'll be like, yo. Yeah, that's another thing too. That's wild. Cause like they'll show pictures like at times and moments. And I'm like, I didn't even know this picture existed, number one. But then also, I ain't seen this person in like 15 years, probably 20 years. And I'm like, what were we on? Like it's just it's it's wild to see some of that stuff. That and then it 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 hits you that like, okay, yeah, I'm officially grown. Yeah. Cause this stuff don't even excite me anymore. I'm just like I'm almost cringe that like that it that it exists. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. But on yeah. the flip side though, I mean, it, it's not all bad. Social no, media no, is not. No, I mean, no, no. especially if you you know it is a your source of income mm-hmm. or one of your sources of income. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it does allow people to connect, and there's a lot of funny things that are be on there. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure people get laughs out of looking at absolutely. stuff that's posted. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you know, the availability of information too. So absolutely, yeah, it's not all bad. So um, once again, make sure y'all subscribe to our Patreon, our extended family there, our thinkers there. Uh, we do appreciate y'all, super supporters. Um, Homes hydration. I do want. I know last episode I said we was gonna make sure we shout them out. Thank you for sending the care package. We appreciate you. Um, thank you for being a super supporter. And we do appreciate the, the packages. If you want to send packages to the Black Man Thing podcast, hit us up in the DM. We'll give you the mailing address. Um, we greatly appreciate it. We do like some of the finer things in life. So if you uh, want to send some of those finer things in life, just let us know. We'll gladly accept it. Uh, and we'll give you a shout out, too. We do appreciate you. Man, you didn't say you're, you're um, I didn't do your homeboy check in, man. How are things Thank going you. with you? I man? Appreciate- no, things are going well, man. I had. Um, had a tough couple of weeks, just been busy, busy, like work was busy and then trying to balance, um, like business has been busy and a lot of it had to do with, because like we were, it was like a lot of travel. I did a lot of traveling the past couple of months. And so I think it kind of just, though that traveling being away, they have to come back to still like handle business kind of mm-hmm. just like stockpile, you know yeah. what I mean? So. Uh, but storm is over now, at least for now. Uh, so back to normal. But yeah, it was like a couple of weeks of just like, bro, it was like, felt like I just never stopped. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you just wake up, start working. We're going doing some, you know, checking out a couple of places, finish that, go to work, going to pick up the kid, coming back. And it was just like, everything was just like back to back to back mm-hmm. to back to back. And it was like, I, like you... Everybody, when everybody else finally like go to sleep, and then I'm just kind of like sit back. And I'm just like, damn, it's like ten thirty. Yeah, and I'm just now like really sitting down. And then once I sit down, I realize like, oh no, I still got to edit, or I still got to like, you know, I still got like things to do, so to speak. So like, yeah, it was like two weeks of just nonstop. Felt like nonstop. So just trying to get back into making sure. Even when there's work to be done, just like being okay with saying like, "Bro, I do that tomorrow." Yeah, yeah. I I, I gotta get better. I have to get better at doing it. I'm not the best at that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, just like yeah, it'll get done tomorrow. And have to get to the point of closing my computer because I found myself like I'd be up at like one o'clock just working, and I'm just like, "Bro, just go to sleep." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just go to sleep. So. I'm trying to do better at that, but that's probably been my my struggle for the past couple of weeks. Just that, yeah, for sure. But thank you for reminding me to get that out because I completely forgot. Um, I'm trying to remember our new out, our new outro. Do you remember it? Um, it was yeah. a new one, not like the thinkers. Oh, it was. 
I don't think I've been here for that one. You wasn't here for that one. But um, Marlon going to text it to me. And when he do, I'll, I'll remember it. But it was something. I'm I'm just gonna have to learn it. I don't I don't recall it. Sorry, but something along the lines of things be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> things be thinking. It is what it is. We'll get it down pat. Hey man, we're we're uh, we're a project in progress. Blah blah blah. Subscribe, rate, comment, review. We appreciate y'all. We thank y'all, and uh, we'll see y'all next week. Black Man Thing Podcast. The Black Black Men Men Think Think Podcast. Podcast.